Today we talk about Table Air Combat, a very very simple game of air combat set in World War II and it is a print and play game. So you can go on War Game Vault, uh, the website War Game Vault, uh, which is where I purchase my files and you get the files and, and you can try the game. The game is divided, well it's not like there's a single set, basically it's divided in models. Each set has the name of an air model representing that set. Each set comes with the basic rules which are the same for all models. Some models also have some extra rules and then you have the files for the uh, elements for the components that you need to print to be able to play the game. For example this one is the module for the Spitfire, I also have another module for the BF109E and there is a lot, there are a lot of other models that you can purchase. However, the Spitfire 2 you can also get for free. It is on the website with the available with the pay what you want uh, option. So yes, you can get it for free. You try the game and actually this is really all you need to, to play the game. With this game you will only have Spitfires, but you can have a battle of Spitfires versus Spitfires and then you get a sense of whether or not you like the game and you want to invest in more models. So each, uh, each model slash each module has a set of rules. The basic rules are in all models, so you do not need probably to print it for every model that you buy. Um, it is about uh, 16, 17 pages of rules plus the game scenarios. But these rules, the way uh, they organize on the page, there's a lot, there are a lot of illustrations and there's a lot of white on the page. As you can see, it's really not much text. I wish there had been a way of, comp uh, an option to compress the text. Uh, look at this, this is like a single sentence. I like the fact that there's an illustration, but it means you're printing a lot of pages for a text that if it were compressed, it would probably fit in two pages, three tops. I wish there had been an option of printing only, only that, or you know, detailed player aid. The way it works, as I said, you print the rules, or not, you just read them and make notes because the rules are so simple. And you need to print the components. You need to print the elements uh, representing the aircrafts and the ruler that you need to control movement of the of the planes. Now the um, counters representing the aircraft they're double sided. On one side you have two models and on the other side you have one. As you can imagine usually they start with this side up. When they take a hit you flip them to the other side. They also lose combat capability because there are less guns available now. When that counter takes another hit it is removed. And there are various scenarios. Basic scenario will be a bunch of elements going against a bunch of other air elements and see which is the one that, uh, that is in the sky still at the end of the confrontation. But what really is interesting and I find innovative and really fun in this game is this ruler here. There is one such ruler for each model. So for example this is one for the Spitfire and this is one for the BF109E. And as you can see they are different. Uh, these modules, the, these rulers have all the information that you need to control the airplane. As you can see for example here there is a band indicating gun range. You probably already can figure out how that will, be, will work. As you can see the two models have different gun range. Also look at the shape. The Spitfire can take tighter turns as you can see, in fact, the top here is tighter than this one. So a lot of work has been done for you to factor in the capabilities, the abilities, and also limitations of each model so that they're all hardwired into this ruler and you can mm, you can simply concentrate on gameplay, on maneuvering rather than remember a lot of rules and making a lot of calculations. Really fun idea. How does the game work? Well, uh, comb a turn is pretty, pretty standard. First all models move and then all models will fire against each other simultaneously, which means that even if your element is shut down, this turn it still gets to fire because, again, all fire is simultaneous, even though you may not roll simultaneously in our world. Things are simultaneous in the world of the simulation. Simulation, well, that's a big word here, on the world of the game. 
So first all models move and they, sh they should be simultaneously. Uh, there are rules uh, explaining the game on how to do that. Usually you simply alternate. I guess you can even simply commit to move simultaneously. But the easiest thing is if you the players alternate back and forth moving one model and reacting to what the other player has done. Yes, it's a little less realistic, but it's so much easier and intuitive than if you had to plot, plot movement for each aircraft, which is what you have in so many air combat games. You lose something in realism, but you do get a lot when it comes to pace. The pace of the game is much improved and the game feels more visual because you're looking at the table and thinking about the developing action all the time. How do you resolve movement? Uh, you said this uh, arrow here, this is the one that you use to uh, perform movement, not the front or the counter like in so many other games. Each model has a speed, which is the maximum speed, for example, the Spitfire has five, but also there is a minimum speed, which is the stall speed. You can never travel less than that distance in a turn. And uh, the speed is measured in ticks, so basically that is the currency here. A little abstract, but it works. So the Spitfire must move at least a tick here and can move up to five. Actually, there's also another, um, another element here, which is energy, represented by the number of these green dots that the ruler has. And you can keep track of how much energy each individual model has in any way you want. You can write it down, you can use counters, that's that's how I do it using these yellow yellow cubes. Energy is an abstract way of representing the, uh, let's call it the speed, the potential speed that the, uh, that the element has stored by gaining elevation. And when you spend an energy, you're trading elevation for speed. So simply put in less abstract terms, energy is a currency that when you spend it, when you spend an energy, you get to move an extra tick that turn. To recover energy, you need to move in a straight line and not up to your maximum speed. You need to sacrifice a speed. And by doing so, that simulates the fact that you're slowly uh, gaining altitude and so gaining potential energy that you can spend later by by moving down towards the, towards the ground. So speed, again, minimum, is the stall speed, maximum is indicated speed, plus the possibility of getting some extra speed due to, due to energy. Uh, but how do you perform movement? As I said, you use this indicator here, and then you simply move tick by tick using the ruler, using the edges of the ruler, and you can use any of these ticks that you want. They simply represent different things, and by alternating them and putting in different sequences, you can perform some really neat maneuvers. Suppose, for example, that I decide now to turn in that direction, then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say, okay, this is my movement. One, one tick two ticks, three ticks, and now actually I want to turn the other way. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't want to take as tight a turn as I just did. So I'm going to do another tick like this, another tick like this. And maybe next turn I decide that I want to go straight, I decide I want to do something else, but it's really nice that you have a lot of flexibility here. Maybe next turn I want to gain some energy, and I can say I want to go in a straight line a little bit, then I want to take another uh, super tight turn, and so on and so forth. So, really nice, it's a simple way, it's a simple way of performing movement that there are games that are much more sophisticated heck even wings of war is more sophisticated but this one is so intuitive and it simply creates an action that is really tight and really fun you don't have to worry about too many things and yet it still feels so that at least there is a certain respect for the restrictions due to the physics and the technology uh well the physics of the environment and the technology of the models due to the fact that different models will act in different ways they maneuver slightly differently and with a word that is factored into the cards here by the ruler. And then, of course, you have, uh, again, different lengths of things. For example, the fact that, that different models have different gun ranges. So once all models have moved, all models will try to fire against each other, if possible. You can fire up to the distance uh, um, indicated in the gun range on your ruler. 
and you simply fire in front and you don't fire out, you simply fire perpendicular to your front out to the gun range, so actually that Spitfire would be able to hit, well to hit at least, to try to hit that that enemy plane and this one uh, just, it seems just out of range, just out of range, we cheat a little bit, oh look at that perfectly in range. So this uh, element can fire against that one and that element against that one. How do you fire? You roll a number of dice which is equal to your gun range, to your to your gun value. When your element has two, uh, has two aircraft that uses this gun value here, when you are reduced use that one there. So uh, same here, you lose of course gun capability when there are less people firing. So you roll a number of dice equal to that number and you're trying to roll equal to or higher than the defense of the opponent. And you do not apply any modifier here. So suppose the Spitfire is firing against them and I rolled these dice, I rolled these dice, so I have two dice that are equal to or higher than the defense of the Spitfire. Then the dice that are hit are re-rolled. Basically these reach the target, but are they gonna deal damage? We're gonna see, because the dice that are hit we re-roll and now we apply the firepower modifier which is zero for the Spitfire firing against them. We apply the firepower modifier and we actually create, we actually shoot down one of the enemies if we roll equal to or higher than the airframe. So first you need to reach the target and then to actually penetrate the airframe. Nope, see, we did, we scared them, but that's it, but that's it. We didn't damage them. Suppose that actually we had hit them with any of the dice, with any of the dice, then the target loses a step. If a single element fired against a single element inflicts multiple uh, multiple damages, that is, penetrate the airframe multiple times, you still only lose one one step, because it simply means that one of the two elements of the, uh, one of the two aircrafts of the en enemy element was shot down. To destroy an enemy element in a single turn, you need to fire with it uh, to it from different places with different elements and hit him twice. And this is how the game works. Really, it is that simple. Move using the ruler, keeping speed, stall speed, and energy in mind. Roll against the defense of the opponent. Each die that is a hit, you re-roll against the airframe, applying your firepower and see who is the player that wins the the game based on the scenario that you're fighting. Uh, the, and the basic scenario is of course dog fights, but then you have the scenarios <clears throat> where you're escorting <clears throat> escorting aircraft, where you're trying to prevent the opponent from bombing, uh, from bombing locations and so on and so forth. If you played Wings of War, you're familiar with this kind of scenarios and you will be able to come up with your own scenarios very easily. In any case, the Rollbook also gives you some scenarios. This is stable air combat, uh, simple, intuitive, really, really inexpensive, and I like it. I like it a lot. I think this is a great introductory war game. Uh, introductory air game. Air games have a bad reputation of being particularly complicated uh, due to the physics and all that. They don't have to be, and this is an example of a game that that feels right, that is fun to play, that has a nice flow to it, and uh, and that is still very, very fun to play and very approachable. And that's what I like about air combat, is the fact that you can't stop. It's not like, well, I'm gonna hide in a hole, I'm gonna hide behind that bush and wait uh, what happens when you have, you know, uh, land warfare. Nope, you have to keep moving. Decisions have to be taken in the most hostile environment ever. An environment, uh, really, we are going against nature in the most possible, uh, in, in the deepest sense. You're flying, you're not supposed to be there. So there is this prohibitive situation where the physics are manipulating and you have to fight in a situation where you have to deal uh, with the physics and you have to deal of course with enemies that are shooting at you. I really like air combat because of the sense of tension that this constant movement brings, but if I have to do too many calculations then uh, that kills um, the sense of flow, the sense of pace, the sense of speed. This game retains those elements, retains the sense of speed of a tight confrontation, 
And as opposed to other miniature games, this is a miniature game. The miniatures are made of paper and 2D, but it is, plays, it is played in continuous space. It is played in regular space, so it is a miniature game. And as opposed to other miniature games, this is one that doesn't really take up much space. <clears throat> It's easy to teach, it fa it's fast, so it may not have an epic feel like other war games have, unless I guess you really play a large battle, then you may have that. May may not have that, that epic feel, but you know, having a war game that you can teach and play in under an hour easily on a small surface with, uh, with an expenditure of, well, zero, if you only purchase the Spitfire, um, that is a good option, that is not a bad thing to have, especially when you consider that you have all those practical advantages and the game is actually good, because you may have those practical advantages and the game sucks, so what is the point? But this is fun, uh, the action is tense, um, the, when I read about, the, the, about combat I thought that combat would be too murderous, that you know, there would just be a single die roll and boom, everybody would be destroyed, it just seemed real killer, but somehow it, that wasn't the case, actually the action turned out to be more nuanced than I expected, with nice moments of tensions, with WTF moments of scores when you have the best shot set up and the dice go against you and moments of incredible luck for the opponent that is shooting at you and against all odds hits you. Um, tense, fun, great narrative and all of this in a very portable, manageable package. Yes, very portable. You can carry it with you in a pocket once you know the rules. All you need is the ruler and a bunch of these things. Up, and of course the dice, but these days you can use your phone and a die roller on your phone. A lot of advantages, a fun game, uh, as I said, you can try for free with this uh, with this module here, the Spitfire 2 from Wargame, <coughs> Wargame Vault. Uh, other modules slash models, if I'm not wrong, they are like $1.50 each, so actually you can get a decent collection for like $10-$15. But it's fun. It's a fun game. I highly recommend it. I hope you give it a try. You won't even spend uh, any money if you want to give it a try. Building it is a breeze. I'm not a fan of print and play games where you have to spend hours and hours and a lot of money in ink and glue and, and other stuff to build a game. Not this case. Print it or don't print the rules. They're so simple. Just print one sheet of paper uh, with, the rule, with the ruler, another sheet of paper with the models and you're good to go. Table Air Combat, I'm glad I found it and I highly recommend it to anybody who is looking for a quick, simple, but definitely fulfilling word game.